One of the reasons teachers are hesitant about academic pathways is that they are concerned that it will lead them to being pressured into granting students credits when they have not really achieved curriculum expectations. In this video, we will examine what the different levels of achievement mean and their implications for student success and how teachers should approach academic pathways. According to Growing Success, a student is granted a credit if they are above 50%. But the provincial standard is set at 70%. This means that students with achievement levels 1 and 2 should really be considered as simply getting the credit, whereas students with levels 3 and 4 are meeting the provincial standard. But what does this actually mean in concrete terms? Often, when educators read the achievement definitions in Growing Success, they focus on the qualifying terms associated with each level. Level 1 is associated with the term limited achievement, level 2 with some, level 3 with considerable, and finally, level 4 is associated with a thorough achievement. But these qualifying terms are extremely subjective and vague, and they result in educators having a wide variety of interpretations in the achievement levels. A better strategy for evaluating students is to focus on the description on the implications of the levels on students' future success. If we do this, it reshapes our understanding of the levels. According to the descriptions, level 1 and 2 students will require support and remediation in future grades of this course. But level 3 and 4 students are students who have illustrated the curriculum expectations to a level that should make one confident that the student can succeed in future levels without any need for remediation or additional support. This means that if the ultimate goal for academic pathways is to ensure that students can truly pursue pathways in the subject area, level one and two cannot be seen as a goal for achievement. Realistically, we need to have students achieving a minimum of level three. This is obviously a much more challenging goal for teachers, but I hope to show over time that this is a very realistic goal for the vast majority of students. Finally, we do need to acknowledge that there remains the possibility that a student will reach the end of the course and they should not be granted the credit. If we extrapolate the descriptions of the achievement levels to below level one, this suggests that a student should not be granted the credit if their achievement level at the end of the course suggests that they cannot successfully complete the next grade level despite any reasonable level of support or remediation that could be expected. Recently, I analyzed my mark file from the academic pathways class I had in quad one. From my analysis, I found that level one and level two student marks were usually depressed due to missing marks and a lower score in application tasks specifically. But otherwise, I could clearly document that they have achieved the overall expectations of the course. This means that if I want to ensure that I have 100% of my students at level three and four, I will need to find a way to decrease the number of no submissions in my course, and also I would need to target the higher order thinking skills of students scoring level 1s and level 2s. In short, level 1 and level 2 students can show the basic concept of the course, but they're still working on their higher order thinking skills, and they clearly have to work on their learning skills. Finally, my records show that there were no students who failed to get the credit in Quad 1, and we did this without resorting to credit recovery, credit rescue, or any significant amount of extra help outside of class time. When other educators see samples of my students' work and my mark records, they often form one of several hypotheses. Some have suggested that my marks are inflated and that the samples I am showing do not show the true performance of my class, but rather they are cherry-picked data. Others suggest that my students are low-need students and they are not reflected of students in their classes or in the board as a whole. There are some educators who recognize that it is possible that the program that I'm using closes the gaps and facilitates students' achievements. I hope to show over time that the explanation for the success in my classes is that the program I use closes the achievement gaps and facilitates students' achievement. However, there are no silver bullets in education. 
And so the program that I use is not about using a single or even a few strategies. There are a host of strategies that work together to create the achievement you see in my classrooms. But the strategies are not really my bright ideas. They are my best inferences on how I need to work to apply a wide variety of research findings from the field of cognitive science that show how we can target learning and executive functioning in the brain. If you are an educator and this subject matter interests you, please consider subscribing to this channel. I will do my best to make videos on this topic at a reasonable pace. Please remember that I am a full-time teacher, so don't expect frequent or high quality videos. My sincere hope is that my videos are useful to others and help me to consolidate and reflect on my practice. And finally, if you are a classroom teacher, good luck on your journey. We are all in this together.